All right, we're live. Welcome to episode 26 of the Pro Go Paduk Weichi podcast. I'm Shao Dai, and we have Gaza. Gaza. All right, Gaza, we have a lot to get through this week, so let's let's get cracking. Now, Gaza, right, where, where are we going to start? We're, we're going to start with the what I consider to be the biggest, 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 biggest news of the week. Uh, Shin Min Jun actually uh, defeated Shin Jin So in a best of three. Can you believe that? Oh, Shin Jin So lost a title? Oh, yep, yep, yep. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is this is fascinating news because um, he, he didn't just lose, he lost 2 0. Yeah, he lost 2 0. Very yeah. clean. And then both games, he just got outplayed, basically. Yeah, it was almost as if he's uh he's human. Yeah, well, um, unbelievable. Uh, I'm not really sure if it's actually indicative of anything, but um, basically, you know how Li Xuan Hao he's doing quite well in the in the Chinese scene. He's he's you now doing quite well, and uh, according to one ranking, Li Xuan Hao is now ranked above Xin Jin So. Can you believe this? Number one in the world. That's just very. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. That, that rankings that's not go ratings though. No, that's not that's not go ratings. It's it's a rating that's that's computed based on just one year worth of games. So if you just strictly look at last three hundred and sixty five days, Li Chuan Hao just just above Xin Jin So in terms of rating. So that's very interesting. But uh, let's see. Let's see when when a go rating if Xin Jin So will ever drop out of number one uh, of go ratings. But anyway, just just an interesting tidbit. Now, yeah, but this so this tournament, this tournament was the Myungin, right? Myungin. So this is the the Myungin, the forty fifth Myungin, I do believe. And I I guess I, I there, there I say nobody really expected Sin Sin uh, Minjun to would you win this over Sin Jin so, but uh, it's it's happened. Crazy. Yeah. So um. So this was the final. So, uh, Shin Jin so came out of the winners bracket. Yeah. Having won, you know, all of his games to get yep. to the final, Shin Min Jun, um, he lost um, a game, so he had to go into the losers bracket. I'll just quickly check who he lost to. He lost to Kim Ji Sok. Yep. Um, so he went into the losers bracket, and he had to win. Let's let's see here. One, two. I think he had to win five games hmm. to to make the um, final after after his loss. Yep. So he beat he beat Byun Sang Il. Yep. Um, he had a rematch uh, against Kim Ji Sok. Yep. Uh, and won that. Oh no, he he only had to win four games. He had to win four games after his loss. So he beat Byun Sang Il. He he won his rematch against Kim Ji Sok. He beat Won Song Jin, and then he beat uh, Park Chun Huang to make the final. Oh wow! So it was Shin Jin So and Shin Min Jun. So they've been rivals, well, friends and rivals for you know a decade, a full decade now. Mm. Um, Shin, they recently met in the Korea's Strongest um, title match um, a few months ago, where Shin Jin So won three one. Yep. Um. That that was probably actually the last time they played each other. Mm. Um, so yeah, once again they meet in the final. This time it's a best of three. Yep. Um, and yeah, Shin Min Jun. Yeah, as you said, he outplayed Shin Jin So in both games. It was uh, quite unexpected. Yeah. But let's. Uh, can we have a look at the at the games then? So game one was on, I believe, Wednesday. Yep. Is there any particular move that you want to focus on, Kazar? No, actually. Um... Uh, all right, then I I'll just show you the you know the one moment in game in game one, um, which I've highlighted here, and this is when uh, so Shin Min Jun is black, so, so Shin Min Jun just connected over here. Um, and... you don't uh, wait. Can can you show us the um? I can't see your. Yeah. Um. So let me um. Um. <clears throat> uh. So basically. I think the the viewers can see my screen. I maybe just uh, share okay. it with you. But anyway, this is this is what it looks like. So what you what you see over here is um, Shimin Jun is black, 
Uh, Sinjin So is white. So I just want to point out a couple of things about this game. So notice how this white group here just has just died. And uh, basically, uh, I mean, Sinjin So had no choice but to try and sacrifice the, this group to try and build up a huge Moyu in the middle. But as you can see here, it got broken into by uh, Shiminjun. And to me, this shape looks like a, you know, Shiminjun sticking up a middle finger to Shinjin So. So uh, that, that's what's happened. That's what's happened in game game one. So basically, uh, just not just not, not enough points. I mean, Shinjin So probably didn't lose by that many points, but it would just, you know, they just didn't have enough points in game one. So uh, not, not very happy. And now apparently, Sinjin So once he loses a game, he gets really upset. So he'll go online, go and fox and play a few games at night. So I don't know if that's gonna affect his mood at all or not. But that was that was game one. Shin Min Jun uh, defeated Sinjin So by, um, uh, and then came the second game, which was I believe yesterday. Uh, as of this recording, it was as yesterday. Of this, uh, Thursday. As of this re recording, uh, you can see here. This is the game two pictures from game two. This is Shin Min Jun over here, and Sinjin So, and uh, that's how the second game ended, I believe. And in this game, of course, Sinjin So is um, uh, Sinjin So is black now because they exchange colors, uh, and I, I think a similar kind of thing. There were just not just not enough points for black. Yeah, um, so uh, there was a there was a point um, near the very end of the game, so it was actually quite uh, close for most of the game. I'm not sure if you have the kifu there. Yeah, I have the kifu open, and I found I found this interesting. So after move 166, 166. So. Yeah. yeah, this move here by White apparently is a mistake. Right. And um, what it suggests is it actually suggests that... Now, it, it looks like the, the obvious move here is to connect yeah. the black. And yeah. that's actually what black does. Right. But according to AI, this is this is the fatal move. Yeah. And um, what, it, what it says suggest black to do is is to actually extend to the right those two black stones extend to the right this one underneath no 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 um underneath white's uh last move there were two black stones oh yeah okay oh. and to and to just stretch to the right yeah yeah and basically the AI, i think the ai thinks that black can sort of somehow has to deal with all of these disconnected groups right um, like that's basically the only way that black can sort of in anything else in black won't have enough points. Right. Like it's just too simple for white. Right. And what I found interesting is that that's, that seems like the type of, you know, complicated fighting type of desperation move that Chinjin so tends to play. Yeah. 100%, um, yeah. When, when he's behind yeah. in this late in the game, mm. but he didn't play it. He actually yeah. just played the simple connecting move, connecting, um, which yeah. ended up, leading to his you know his his defeat he, he he was just he was never in the game at that point it was right right one way traffic for white then oh. and it was not as if shinjin so was um in Byoyomi. i don't think he was even in Byoyomi at this point i think he only got it into Byoyomi at the very very end of the game mm. so yeah it seemed a little bit a little bit uncharacteristic yeah um Shinjin So's play yeah. in this, but it's hard to say whether or not it was, it was, yeah, a bit of uncharacteristic, um, mortal, mortal level play from Shinjin So, or whether Shin Min Jun, you know, has, has found that type of form that, that, uh, that let him win the LG Cup. Yeah. Uh... I, I, I would say that it's a combination of, I would say it's a combination of both. Yep. Um, Shin Jin So playing a little bit below his his usual standard, and Shin Min Jun mm. uh, finally finding the consistency that you know he should be having. I, I've I've said this before in previous podcasts, but I I I've long considered Shin Min Jun to be the most inconsistent player in Korea. Yep. Um, you know, you know, I I, I mentioned that. Um, you know, in uh, February last year, he won the LG Cup, and one week before it, he he failed to qualify for a, a 
domestic tournament, and one week after it, he also failed to qualify for another domestic tournament. That's right, yeah. And and the funny thing is here, this his inconsistency hasn't quite gone away because th- what the shocking thing here is, is that he didn't even qualify for the, the Myungin. Yep. He actually lost to uh, Hong Mu Jin in the qualifiers. Yeah. And he, he only he only was put in this tournament as a wild card. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I have to say it's um you know a, a masterful wild card selection. Yeah. Um he, he proved that he was more than deserving of the wild card, but yeah, pretty crazy to think that he didn't even qualify for this tournament and now he's the champion. Yeah. So uh, I guess we're surprised and not surprised that Shin Min Jun actually won uh, you know a domestic tournament um and now but uh, yeah i just want to say so yeah. uh, i i know there are a lot of um shinjin so fans um yeah. probably watching the punk po- possibly watching the podcast as well is is this cause for concern uh, that is a good question um now we we'll, I, I i i'm assuming that's rhetorical uh, but yeah, I, I I really don't think it's Sinjin So is going to go down like this. Um, but I I, don't I, wanna... I do yeah I I I want to I want to just quickly give my opinion. Sorry. Yeah. But I I don't I don't think this is cause for concern. I, I think that there's actually two benefits from this, even for Shinjin So fans. One. Yeah. Um, for Shinjin So to lose in a final, I think this will motivate him further. Yep. Um, he he does not seem the type of player to to. He doesn't seem like he's capable of burning out or 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 just sort of getting bored with Baduk the way other players, mm. other really top players seem to have done in the past, like Kong Ji or yeah. or Park Young Hun or you know, maybe even Ko J at the moment. Yeah. Um, it seems like these sorts of losses will motivate him and, and spur him on. Yeah. And secondly, I think this this could actually be perhaps a defining moment for Shin Min Jun. Mm-hmm. Um, perhaps he he will you know continue this sort of form and rise up and become you know the number two player in Korea. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if people said the same thing after he defeated Koji, but you know, you never know. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good point. <laughs> well, okay, Gaza. Like, I, I do want to mention one thing. I do believe the prize money for um, winning the Myunjin is fifty million won. Uh, and I think I, it may be sixty million, actually. Okay, yeah, six. It might be sixty. You, you could, you could be right. Yeah, it, it's one of those. Yeah, one of those. And uh, and Sh- and Shinjin, so for coming second, he got, I believe, twenty million won. Now I just put twenty million won into Google, and convert it to to Chinese yuan. It's about a hundred thousand yuan. You know what this means? What's that? This means Sin Jin So, if he wins one game in the Jar League, he gets more than what he gets coming second in a domestic. And I don't know, God knows how many games he had to play in this domestic to even come second. So, well, he actually he actually won four games to yeah. make the final, right? Um, and so he only went he only won two thirds of his games. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's actually lower than his career win rate. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh wow! But um, yeah, I just checked the 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 winner's prize money is sixty million yeah. won. Yeah. So okay. it's not actually, it's not actually the um, the biggest um prize money tournament. Right. And um, that's held by the GS Caltex Cup and the Korea Strongest, which I think both of them are seventy million won. Nice. But even if Shinjin So won this, it w- it would only I think he'd only need to win like two or three Jar League games to yeah. um. To, to exceed that, that. Yeah, yeah, it's... yeah. But anyway, um, that's that's Myunjin, Myunjin, uh, one of the surprise of the week, if not the year, for me anyway. Uh, Gaza, is there anything else you want to cover about this Myun, Myunjin before we move on to um, something else? Not really. Um, yeah. Well done to to Shin Min Jun, Shin Min Jun, Shin Myun Jin Jun, <laughs> Shin Myun Jin Jun, but. Yeah. It, interestingly enough, now Shin Jin So actually has only won the Myungin once. Oh wow! Yeah. So now he's tied with Shin Min Jun. That's that's better than his Samsung Cup record. He's won it zero times. Well, I mean, Samsung Cup is probably harder to win. I guess so. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but let's move on to um, the Japanese equivalent of the Myungin, which the, is of course the, the Meijin. The, the Meijin, the original, the Meijin, where the where the word Myungin comes from. Um, 
Now, what's happened to today is the 47th Meijin final game four. Between, game four? Between... Wait, there's... Well, okay, so the Myungin is best of three. Yeah. What's, the, what's the Meijin? The Meijin is best of seven. And, and of seven. It, each game is is uh, usually held over two days because each player gets about eight or nine hours. Eight hours main time, yes. Yeah, main time. Uh, so it's... Uh, for those who you may remember... Uh, the Meijin this year is between Shibano Toramaru and Amayuta, so that's that's a bit of a difference uh, to other tournaments where it's Yama versus you know Ichiriki. So Shibano Toramaru was before this game was leading two one. Right. Uh, yes, he was. Yes, and in 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 this game, I mean, it's it's a very tense game, but I don't really have anything to say about this 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 part except that I think I do also feel that. Ultimately, Yama, you, Yama just got outplayed as well by um, Shibano. Well, yeah. I do have a couple of things I want to say. So, yeah. if you go, um, if you go back a little bit yeah. to where um, Shibano jumps, yeah, just a couple. No, maybe move forty-two. I think. Yeah. Yeah. This move is, seems a little bit of a stretch. Right. Um, this one here. So. In the top right, white is actually sort of. Um, I think white has captured black in the top right and gotten a yeah. big corner. Yeah. But then um, white sort of makes this really ambitious jump. Right. Here and and I think it, it really risks um, those stones at the top getting captured, and they do end up getting captured. Yeah. But um. But yeah. you know maybe, you know maybe you got compensation for it. Yeah. I mean, it, this 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 feels like it's trying to sac for, sacrifice these stones. Like, I think White wants Black to cover here, and then maybe White can Hane down here, and then oh, jump yeah. jump here and just sacrifice it. That's what it feels like. Um, pretty crazy, but anyway. Um, yeah. um, so if you um, now the first day was actually uh, there wasn't much there wasn't much um, play. It only got to move seventy five. I think the first day ended around here. Yeah, that's yeah, ended there. Seventy five, which I think I've seen some first days end in the high sixties yeah. in, in move number, but right. even then I think seventy five is a little bit Yeah, I mean like there's still the top left and the bottom right corners have barely been touched. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was a very uh patient first day. Yeah. Um then the sealed move ended up being a pretty good one. That one. Yep. This shoulder hit. Yeah, that's yep. that's fine. Yeah. And then they finally get into action in the bottom right corner. Right. Yeah. Um, that's when Shibano decides to... Um, yeah, so Shibano... Play. Yeah, Shibano um, does a 3-3 three, three invasion in the bottom right. Yeah. And, yeah, they make a, they make a co. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is... I, you know, why is it... Why is it at danger here of... of you know, dying in the corner. Yeah. And then black, yeah, so if you go here, this 103. Yeah. I don't think this, I don't know if this is a good co-threat. Yeah. Um, I, I just remember watching the stream and I, I do remember seeing the AI hated this move. Well, the problem is that um, white can just ignore it. And I don't think that there were, I think there were other threats that, um, right. there were other moves that, that needed a response. But this one, white can just ignore it. Yeah. Um, it it's not simple. Yeah. Like, it's, like it, it's, it's, it's going to be, black can make things tricky, but yeah. Yeah. I think, I think this co-threat here, well, this, this move 103 is just not yeah. big enough. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't really know what the, what the idea here is, but I mean, it, it does, maybe, maybe Yama is, Thinking that uh, this white group here is not completely alive, so somehow, you know, by cutting here he can threaten this, which I think is exactly the strategy he went for. Like, yes, but it. do you think maybe he's trying to, like, he's trying to threaten that group, but also yeah. enclose those three stones in the middle? Yeah. It's, and I do mean, you think? Yeah, yeah. Do you think maybe that move that he the, the move is just trying to do too much? Yeah, po possibly. I mean, I, I'll be interested in seeing his post game interviews. Or his commentary on this, like what what he's thinking, but it does. I mean, 
it doesn't jump out to me as something that's immediately you know there's a, a follow up that's really severe you know it's but if you look at his play after that you can see that he's trying to attack his white group but it's 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 very very ambitious um, yeah, yeah so yeah so yeah this is it's pretty this is pretty good reading by like it's pretty yeah important re- reading that Shibano has to has to make here to make sure that you know his stones are yeah alive and yeah it you know it's it's obviously one of those games where white needs to play accurately otherwise he's he's you know he could have an entire group just die yeah um and i i, I if i remember correctly uh yama yuta did somehow you know bring the game somewhat closer to like 30 percent. he was on 30 percent win rate but it, after that he his position collapsed a little bit. I think, yeah, uh, well, the AI says that the win rate was fine, but it was just, it was so much more difficult to play for black yeah. because mm-hmm. it really involved getting, getting points in the middle, in the top, in the top middle. Yeah. Like black really had to get a big territory in the top middle and right. it was just too easy for white to, to break through. Right. Um, um, yeah. So, so then, um, yeah, so, so yeah black black tried to do some shenanigans in the top left yeah um but just like just like with the co around move 100 um white white was able to ignore so so if you if you go back to if you if you go back to move 200 yeah so yeah so this was it, this was near the end of the game anyway yeah so um so after move 203 there's a there's sort of a co yeah and then so white takes the co and then black threatens there and yeah so this is this was basically you know as you can see white just sacrificed those three stones yeah. on the on the bottom left because yeah it turns out white has more than enough points and yeah at this point now um because if if black actually won that co black's got a much bigger region in the top in the top middle yeah so I think Iyama was sort of just bluffing Shibano yeah. there. Yeah. All right. Um if if you remember in Honimbo game one, there were a couple of times when when Aba, when uh, Iyama, sorry, uh played co threats that could just be ignored, but Ichiriki ended up responding to them. Yeah. Um and the, Iyama ended up winning the game. So this was this was kind of like that, but in, in this case, unfortunately for Iyama, Shibano didn't respond to the co threat and just took the co. And yeah. you know, Ayama got a, a little bit more territory on the bottom left, but it wasn't enough. And now there's now there's simply nothing. There's no complications anymore. Yeah. Shibana's completely simplified. White's completely simplified the game, and so Ayama resigns at this point. Yeah. So there's no um, nothing to fight over, I guess. So yeah. So so uh, after this game, Shibano have gone three one up. We've mentioned that before, but uh, Shibano have been in this exact situation before, have, hasn't he? Yeah, well, it, it's it's almost yeah, it's it's almost like a deja vu because in last year's um, Honimbo title match, yeah. Shibano challenged Ayama, and it, I think it was the exact same sequence. Ayama won game one, yeah, and then Shibano won the next three games, yeah, and that's exactly what's happened here in the Mei Jin. Yeah. Um, Ayama won game one, but Shibano's now won games two, three, and four, yeah. The thing is, last year in the in Honimbo, Ayama ended up winning games five, six, and seven to win yeah. at four three. Yeah. Um, so definitely no time for Shibano to let his guard down, but you know, this turns out to be another very exciting um, Honimbo. Uh, well, this is, Ma- Majin, this Majin, is the major. This is the major. Yeah, it, it was only Honimbo. The, the last year's Honimbo. The last went. yeah, last year's title match yeah. um, between Shibano and Ayama was the Honimbo. Yeah. Yeah. But this year it's the Majin. Yeah. Um, but I have to say that I remember in last year's Honimbo, yeah. games two, three, and four, all of them involved Iyama playing way too aggressively and, and a big dragon dying. Yeah. And all of those games ended, I think, ended quite quickly. If I, if I recall, in the second game, it didn't even get to lunchtime on, on the second day. Right. Yeah, it was some big uh, dragon killing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but all of them were... All of them were more a case of a Yama playing, taking too big a risk. Mm. In in these games, I'm I'm more impressed by by Shibano's um, 
by Shabano's play. He hasn't been given as you know met as big opportunities. Yeah. As as in the Honenbo game, but he's yeah. um he's he's shown yeah he's shown yeah he's he's shown more um sort of mental fortitude. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think it will be. I think it will be difficult, more difficult in this case for Ayama to win the last three games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the, in in the both both games, if I remember correctly, the Shibano, they, he he in both games he kind of just at the, near the end of the game, once he realizes that he's he's got the lead, he starts to you know trying to simplify it, you know, try to play solid, and that's exactly what happened. This is no dragon killing game that he. They yeah. play to try and win. It's it's basically but, just you know I've got yeah. enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna start doing Yose. Yeah. Yeah, and he didn't seem to be he didn't seem to be uh, afraid. Like he didn't he didn't play timid or or very passive moves. Yeah. Um, when the game was still up in the air, he 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 really um. Hmm. He really was quite um. Yeah. You know, aggressive with his 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 play. Well. Yeah. It, Aggressive in moderation, but yeah. it, it was definitely not. He definitely didn't play with fear today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shibano is doing really well recently. If you may recall, he's also won the uh, Kisei League, S League, so he's he's he might become the Kisei challenger as well. So Ichiriki, yeah. watch out! Now, guys, yeah. is there anything else you want to cover about his Meijin before we move to, on to another competition in Japan that also features Yama? Well, I just want to say, so this is a, this was actually Ayama's second game this week. We're not we're not covering these games in chronological order. No, no. Um, but this was actually Ayama's second game of the week. So the first game was played on Saturday, right? Yeah. And and what game was that? That's the 29th Argon Kiriyama Cup final between Yama Yuta and Hirata Tomayo. Yeah, so I just want to make a quick correction here. Last yeah. week at the very end of the podcast, I actually said that that uh, Hiroshi Yuichi was right. was one of the finalists along with Ayama Yuta. So right. I got that I got that completely wrong. I I don't know why I thought Hiroshi Yuichi was in the the final, but it's actually Hirata Tomoya. Yeah. Um, uh, no. Yeah. So so my apologies for that, but yeah, this is. Hirata Tomoya and Iyama Yuta. Yeah. Now, I, I can't say I know too much about Hirata Tomoya uh, at all. So, but, but I, now he, he, Hirata Tomoya did win the final game versus Yama Yuta by one and a half point. And the other thing is Hirata also beat Ichiriki Ryo and he beat um, in, in, in the main tournament. And also, he also eliminated Yu Zhengqi in the prelim, right? In fact, uh, Hirata Tomayo, he actually started in prelim B, which I believe is the second lowest tier of prelim. I think it's prelim C, and then prelim B and prelim A, and yeah, before you can make the main tournament. So so he actually come a long way to, uh, from way low down the, the prelim system to actually win this. And he beat three very, very strong players along the way, Yu Zhengqi, Jiriki, and finally Yama Yuta. Yeah, um, so he's actually, this is actually his um, second uh, title. Right. Um, he he won the, um, the young, uh, a, a young, tor- a young players tournament. Right. In 2019. Yeah. Um, the, in English translation, it's the Hiroshima Aluminium Cup Young Carp Competition. The Young Carp, yeah, the fish competition. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and um, this is this is his second title, and yeah. yeah, it's. I think when when we saw that when when we saw that uh, he actually beat Ichiriki, yeah, to make the final, and then that Ayama also made the final. Like I, I think. Most people were were thinking, well, that's another that's another title for yeah. Yama. Right. Yeah. Uh, should be an easy win. Yeah. But no, um, uh, Hirata Tomoya actually actually beat him. Yeah. Um, yeah, a really impressive game. Yeah. Um, is there anything you you want to mention about the Kifu at all, Gaza? Um, I must admit, I didn't uh, watch 
the game that much. Yeah, right. Um, uh, anyway, um, so now I think this is uh, Hirata Tomoya. And one thing I do want to say that a lot of these Japanese players are also skilled calligraphers. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but they're, they're really skilled at calligraphy. Yeah, so they, you know, he's putting putting something on the... Now, one thing that was... When 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 it was reported that uh, Hirata won the... He actually won the tournament. One of, one of the... One of the... A way that people, you know, uh, try to, I guess, report on Hirata or introduce him to the public is by talking about his wife, which I think, I believe it's pictured here. Now, apparently her wife is a semi-famous voice act actor in Japan. Um, so yeah, so that's 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 the interesting thing about about Hirata. I think they met when when she was playing some teaching games or something or appearing on TV. But anyway, that's all the info I got about Hirata. So congrats. And unfortunately for Yama, it's it's uh, you know he lost another big game this week. Yeah. Yeah, Iyama actually made the final last year. As well? Right. Um, yes, against um, Su Wan. Right. And I remember watching that one live, and Su Wan won that game. And yeah. I think it, like it was, I think it was similar in that both of them were actually quite, you know, they got they got to Yose, and Iyama lost by a, a few points in both cases. Right. Oh yeah. yes. Again, I... I, yeah, I apologize for not. I I was because it was a Saturday. I was. Um, I was actually, you know, I was out. Yeah. I, I actually had a social life for once and <laughs> I was out, me and a friend. Um, so I didn't get to follow this game and I'm, I'm afraid I didn't have time to look at the Kifu afterwards. But it, it, it I, I think it went right down to the end. I'm not sure if Iyama resigned. Yeah, no, I think it's 1.5. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I don't think it was. I don't think it was anything in the end game. I don't think Iyama lost it in the end game. It, it, they just played it out. But um, yeah, it, it was a. I'm sure. I'm sure it was a good game. Uh, apologies for not um, looking at the key through there. Yeah, no, no worries, Gaza. Now, wh one thing I, I do want to say is that uh, the winner of this tournament will play the winner of the Chinese tournament called Ahan Tongshan uh, Cup. Which has also happened. Uh, we'll probably report on that. Uh, uh, Kerje is still in that tournament. I think the winner will, will face off each other. It's a Japan versus China uh, challenge, which has been mostly won by by China, but uh, Japan has also won it a, a couple of times in the last. Yes, yes. The last matchup was between Su Shawan, as who, as we said, won the last Kiriyama right. Cup, and China's uh, champion was Gu Zihao. Right. Yeah. And Gu Zihao uh, won that one. Yeah. But I do believe that Ayama. I do believe that Ayama may have won. Yeah, Ayama won against Huang Yin Song, uh, and then and then after that, Cho Yu won against Venting Yu. I believe those were the only two victories for Japan in the last fifteen years, if my memory serves me right. But um, yeah, it's. Uh, oh, I'm looking forward to to the, to it. I I guess no one would really fancy Hirata, but you know, you never know. He might he might spring another surprise. Yes, yes. So, yeah, after Ayama Yuta won it in 2015, mm. um, Cho Yu won it in 2019. Yep. And they, they're they the only Japanese wins since 2002. Oh, wow. Yeah, so longer than I thought. I yeah, think. so yeah. there was a, yeah, China actually won it 12 times in a row. Right, yeah. Um, Before, yeah, before Ayama yeah. Um, ended up. We need it in 2015. So it, it, it has been, um, it, yeah, it has been quite a dominating um, event for, for China. But so, okay, we I shall guess. see. I mean, we don't know who Hirata Tomoya will be will be faced against. Yeah, no. So now I, I do want to just tell a really quick story about this this, this Japan-China challenge in the Argon Kiriyama Cup. So I think, I believe it was one year, it was uh, Kerje versus Yamayuta. I, I yeah, that was in 2014. Right. Yes. And you know, Kerji is famous, very famous for, well, he's, he's reasonably famous in China for, for a Weishi player. So he did say, Kerji did say before the game that he will uh, he will make it so that Yama Yuta will spill blood to as far as five steps away. 
you know. <laughs> that that was that was Kurtz's famous saying, um, one of his many many sayings that he that he's said over the years. So yeah, and another th- another thing worth another thing worth pointing out, by the way, yeah. is that um, in Japan, the Aegon Kiriyama Cup, the pro- the winner first prize, if you win it, you get ten million yen. Yeah. And so in Australian dollars, that in Korea, that's about a hundred million won. Right. Which is which is more than a domestic title, and it's actually more than some of the majors in Japan. Yeah. It's more than, for instance, the Judan, and I think it may also be more than the um, the Gose. Yeah, I think it's bigger than those two. It's smaller small than the Osa, uh, but it's, it's yes, yes. So I, I'm just yes, it actually is. The Gose is eight million yen. Yeah. The Judan is seven million yen, and the the Aegon Kiriyama Cup is ten million yen. And, but it's not just that, because as we said, if you win the Aegon Kiriyama Cup, you play in the China Japan matchup. Yeah. And the runner up gets um, gets two million yen. Yeah. Nice. And like since it's only a two it's only a one game two person event, yeah. you're guaranteed two million yen. So wow. basically if if you win if you win this tournament in, in in Japan, you're guaranteed at least twelve million yen. Yeah, that's which big. is the same, which is the same price as the Tengen. Yeah, that's that's actually not bad. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Now it's funny that you mentioned Tengen because that's exactly what we're going to cover next, Gaza. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. I, I don't know how you did that, but what's uh, what's special about this year's Tengen, Gaza? Well, um, well, I think well, I I, I want to look at the so I. There's a there's a particular move in the Kifu that I want to cover, but yeah. I'll just give the um, I'll just give the uh, sort of the background. So the yeah. Tengen um, had a, a fairly su- um, surprising title holder yeah. in Seki Kataro. Yeah. Um, it's his first title, and he's he's quite young. It's a bit surprising because he, uh, in any of the other tournaments, he hasn't done particular like the other majors. He hasn't really gotten that far. Mm-hmm. Um, in other majors. But he did get to the Tengen title match um, against Ichiriki Rio last year, and he actually won it three yeah. one. Mm. So that means that he is, you know, the Tengen, the Tengen, yeah. the Tengen title holder. Yeah. Um, it all. It was actually he actually set a record for the fastest um, to win a major after turning pro in Japan. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, four years and eight months. So that's a that's a record. Yep. Yeah. Four years and eight months after turning pro, he won the Tengen. So that's mm. a record. Yeah. And this, so, so he had the title. So then there was, you know, the the next twelve months was to determine the um the next eleven, I guess, months was to determine his challenger. And Ichiriki Rio obviously wanted to um he wanted to to get back to to his title, and he made the final mm. of the challenger tournament. Yeah. But he actually lost to former Judan, uh, Ida Atsushi. Yeah. Um, and Ida Atsushi, who just... Now, Ida Atsushi, he just recently turned nine down. Yeah. Um, because he won enough... He, he, he won enough games as an eight down. Mm-hmm. Um, but but this title match is between two players who have who have had one title. One major title, that is. Mm-hmm. Um, Seki Kataro, obviously the current Tengen, and Ida Atsushi, the former Judan. Yep. And it's a best of five, the Tengen, and this was game one. Mm. And if we have a look at the Kifu. Yep. So, the, yeah, I I want to go to uh, move two. Oh, bang. Yeah, so this was move two. <laughs> And appropriately enough, move two is played at Tengen. Yeah. Now, it's worth it's worth noting. It's worth noting, first up, that these the players don't actually know for game one. The players don't know what color they are until the game until like literally just before the game starts. Yeah. Because they determine the color through nigiri, mm. which is where you know one player holds a bunch of stones and the other player guesses if it's odd or even. Right, and that's how they determined the color. So Ida Tsushi didn't know he was white until they started playing. Yeah, and 
it's it's interest like it's interesting to think he obviously prepared this right yeah but yeah it's just so it's just so bizarre to see this at in the beginning of the game it, could, do mm. you, like I'd like I, I want to hear your thoughts on this I, I don't I don't have any, any thought except it's really apt that um you know he played at the Tengen in the Tengen final. So, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone in the Discord jokingly asked, "Does that does that mean that he wins the game?" Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the the other thing is now, of course, nowadays we just kind of used to AI analysis. Apparently, this move maybe just lost only a few points in the according to AI. So it was the game was still like sixty forty uh, a few moves later. So oh, it totally, yeah. Totally no, so I have a I have a theory on this. So, yeah. so in the past, in the past, um. Tengen has been played very early in the game, and but usually it's been by Black on the first move. Right. And this this sometimes happened um, when there was no Komi. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a famous game by Gose Gen against uh, Katani Minoru. Yep. Um, where Gose Gen played at Tengen and then played Mimic Go or Mirror Go. Yep. For like the first 65 or so moves. Yep. Um. And that's so. That's often been um, that's sometimes been a, a strategy in the past for for a player for Black to play at Tengen, and then to just mimic um, White's moves. Um, like one advantage there is that Black doesn't need to to think about the moves at all. He can just yeah. you know play the opposite to to what White has played, and yeah. although. It may not be as advantageous now that there's Komi. Um, you know, the fact that, that Black can save energy for the, you know, the first few dozen moves, you know, doesn't have to think, maybe able to get a bit of a time advantage as well. Yeah. And also, you know, Black is the one who can decide to break symmetry whenever to break symmetry. And so, yeah, it, it may still be an advantage for Black, but it's, it is very rarely played. Um, yeah, playing Tengen at the first move. I'm not sure if I've ever seen White play Tengen or at move two. No, no. And I, my theory here, my hypothesis in this case, is it was a psychological move by Ida at Sushi. Right. I think. I think he basically. My my theory is that he felt that if he could play Tengen at move two, mm. which according to AI is a suboptimal move. Yeah. And win, it would deal such you know a psychological blow yeah. to Seki Kitaro mm. that it would sort of damage damage him mentally for the rest of the the title match. Right, right, right. Very interesting theory. That, that's that's my theory. And yeah. to credit to Ida Atsushi, um, he mm. there was a point in the game where where it was actually um, somewhat even. Right. Um, so he did sort of so as as. As p- people probably know, um, AI does say that Tengen at in the middle, like Tengen on move two, is basically a mistake by White. Mm. But it's not a game losing mistake. No. It loses a, a few points, yeah. which you know is is probably quite a bit in professional level play. But um, you know, it's it's not insurmountable. Hundred percent, yeah. So, uh, and I, I mean, but. But also, but I guess what ended up happening was that Seki Kataro actually won this game. So it wasn't to be for Ida Ashish Sushi. Yeah, so um yeah, so Ida Sushi lost quite a bit on um on the left here. Yeah. But yeah, there was a there was a point I believe where where White had quite a bit um to work with. Mm. On on the bottom, right. Um. Yeah. Let Let's see. So I think it was about. So move um 111. Yeah, it was. Yeah, move 111. Mm. Um. The AI says that this is quite even. It's quite even, but then oh. um. Either White's next move here. Mm. Uh, this this is this is really not a good move. It basically just loses Sente, I think. Right, right, right. It's not like it's just completely unnecessary. Yeah. Um, 
um, it's 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 such a small move that it it's mm. yeah it's it's really too slow and and then Black gets Sente can play in the corner in the yeah. bottom right corner and yeah Black just has no trouble no problems sort of living in that corner yeah and yeah it's just it's just too much for too much uh, deficit for White to make up now yeah yeah um, actually now that you mention it it does look a really slow move um, it, it's probably trying to protect some kind of cut that he saw but I guess it wasn't necessary I guess but it, it just wasn't as it just yeah. wasn't big enough yeah. to um, to warrant making making that move right I think I think the AI suggests playing in the bottom right corner first right right yeah um, okay so um, that's 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 game one of yeah so yeah so as you I'm not sure if yeah, you mentioned this, but yeah, Seki Katara did end up winning this game. Yeah, but because because I'm again, I'm really not unsure as to Itatsushi's strategy. Yeah, I I'd, I'd have to imagine that he doesn't. He's he's probably he's probably more disappointed that that he played, you know, that he that he lost the game after after getting to a, a fairly complicated position where it was it could go either way. Yeah. Um, but. He, he probably may take a little bit of confidence that he, he did play Tengen and was sort of able to get it to a fairly even position. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, like a win's a win. So <laughs> yeah. he, he, he now needs to win three of the next four. Idatsushi needs to win three of the next four if he, if he wants a chance to win this Tengen title. Yeah. Uh, it won't, won't be easy. So we may see Seki retaining his, his Tengen. Um, but uh, but Seki if, is is yet to if, make any of the three major leagues. So yeah, and the thing is, if Seki Kitaro retains the Tengen, he'll be promoted to nine down. Right, right. Currently, he's at eight down. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's see let's see if Seki makes a makes a league next year. Um, so Gaza, after this covering the Tengen, we're gonna stay in Japan, but switch to the women's game which is the first 41st women's honinbo game one fujisawa arena versus ueno asami and uh, i honestly don't remember much about this game and see if looking at the key will jog my memories but is there anything else uh, you want no, to no I, I do remember i do remember this game right. um i think this game was played on tuesday yep so i was you know i was working but i i do believe that i i I did actually follow this game a little bit, and it was um, the thing that I noticed when I was, you know, when I was following this game in my work breaks was the top right corner. Right. So in this case, um, Fujisa Arena is black. Yeah. Um, you know, As- Asami. Mm. As- uh, no, sorry, Asami. You you know Asami. Uh, you know Asami. Yeah, you know Asami is white. Yeah. Now, yeah, so. So here, um, yeah, this move here, this basically kills white in the top right. Right. So I'm wondering, I don't know what went wrong here for white. I think, I think for, I think somehow white's previous move just wasn't strong enough. Right. So move, uh, 66. But right. I, yeah, it's a, it's, it's quite complicated, but I'm think, I think that, so basically, um, black, yeah, black then plays the, um, the, at the vital point in move 67. Yeah. And I'm thinking white in move 66 needed to play a move that put more pressure on the black stones at the top. Right. So basically blacks, obviously black is, is not, doesn't have two eyes yet at the top right right and i think white needed to do something to white needed to to make a move that would put more pressure on black stones at the top probably not killing those stones but but bullying them enough that white could make huge gains elsewhere like at the top left or something like that right but i'm not really sure but the yeah the thing is that with move 67 um black essentially is is taking that top right huge corner yeah. and white's just white white's basically playing catch-ups for the rest of the game right and 
Fujisa Arena, she she's she's one of the more peaceful players, I think. Right. Um, and she she knows how to handle a lead, basically. Mm. Yeah. Um. So you can see that you can see that you know White was putting a little bit of pressure on Blackstones at the top, mm. but I don't I don't think yeah I think move sixty six was a bit too slow. Like it, it didn't, it didn't serve enough of a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. But, but who knows? I mean, the, yeah, the, the, the problem was that, that black just has too much of an, of an advantage and Rina Fujisawa doesn't really is, is good at not taking risks when she doesn't have to. Mm. And um, yeah, in the end, I think she was ahead by, I think she was only ahead by like two and a half points at the end or something, but right. she, she she counted like her counting was was perfect like she knew she knew that she was winning so right well i mean the win's a win two and a half it doesn't matter if you win by two and a half points or or 20 and a half points yeah 100 percent. yeah um yeah so it ended up yeah, this group ended up dying okay cool all right um so this is game one and what's the is is this hon women's yeah, yeah it didn't go to the end yeah the women's Honinbo is best of five. Yeah. Um, and you know, so you know Asami, so she's actually had a really strong year already. She won the International Senko Cup, as mm-hmm. we've mentioned several times. Mm. And she also won the um, Azu Central Hospital Cup, right. um, winning the title off Fujisa Arena. So she's already won a title off Fujisa Arena this year. Yeah. Um, she's trying to win a second one. But... Um, yeah, she's she's down she's down one nil yep. now, and uh, she'll have to win what she'll have to win three of oh just like uh, Ida at Sushi she'll have to win three of the next four. Yeah, oh, well, well, so let, let's see. I mean, these two are clearly the two strongest you know uh, players in Japan, women's players in Japan. So yeah, more fascinating battles to come from them. Now, Gaza, if there's nothing more to say about this game, let's move on to another final, but staying in Japan. And again, moving back to the men's, but uh, it just so happens that the final was between two two, two men, but it could have been uh, between uh, men and women players or women and women players as well. This is the 47th Rookie King uh, between Otake Yu and Sakai Yuki of Japan. The Rookie King final. So this is this final wasn't actually played this week. It was played, um, well, it was played over two weeks, the yeah. previous two weeks, I believe. And um, this was, um, yeah, the the Rookie King. So um, it's basically there's, um, it's the, the rookie. You know, it has differing um, meanings yeah. in many different sports. Um, yeah. Sometimes rookie means it's literally your first year as a pro. Mm-hmm. Um, in Japan, what it what it means is you have to be basically if you're tw- you have to be under twenty five. Yeah, you have to be six da- six dan or or lower. Right, and you can't you can't have already. Now they they also have a requirement that if you've already won the title, you can't participate anymore. You can't win it more than once. Right. Um. So you can compete in multiple Rookie King tournaments. Right. Um. It, for instance, um, you know, Asami actually made the final last year, mm. uh, where she lost. I think she lost two one to Sebun Satayanagi. Mm-hmm. And this year she made the semi final. All right. Mm. Uh, where she lost to Atake Yu. Yeah. A game which we yeah. we have covered. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Um. And no, no. so Atake Yu obviously was in the final, mm. and here he was facing against Sakai Yuki. Yeah. Who I'm not sure if we've mentioned before, but he did compete in the Wu Ching Wan Cup. Ah, uh, you, um, you mean the Globus Cup? He may have competed in the Globus Cup as well. He, he oh, sorry, not the Wu Ching Wan Cup, the um, Niwei Ping Cup. Sorry. Yeah, Niwei Ping Cup, yeah. The Niwei Ping Cup. He yeah. probably, actually, I don't know if he competed in the Globus Cup. He may have. Yeah. 
Um, I'll just I'll just quickly quickly check. Yeah. Um, but he also competed in um, if he, he competed with Miura Taro and Nakamura Samire in in a in a team event. Right. Yeah. Earlier this year. Yeah. Um, where they they finished fourth. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm just checking. He he was he di- he didn't compete in the Globus Cup. Not this year anyway. Right. Um. But yeah, he he was in the Niwei Pin Cup, and yeah, he's one of the stronger um, youth players, right? In in uh, Japan, yeah. Uh, he's a three darn. Mm-hmm. Now Otake Yu, yeah. Um, a very formidable opponent. He's a seven darn. Yeah. Um. So obviously, uh, Otake Yu, as as I said in this tournament to. To be eligible in this tournament, you have to be six down or lower. Hmm. So the thing is that Atake Yu, um, he was a six down when he entered this tournament. Yep. So he he got promoted to seven down um, during the tournament because he later le- uh, late earlier this year he entered the Honinbo League. Yep. He actually um, beat Fuji Fujisawa Arena. Yep. To to uh, earn a spot in the Honimbo League, and yeah. that got him promoted to seven dan. Mm. But because because he entered this Rookie King tournament as a six dan, yeah. um, you do, you don't just get kicked out if you end up getting promoted to seven dan. Uh, yeah, it, it's whatever ranking you enter the tournament as that um, that yeah. counts for eligibility. Mm. Um, yeah, but both of these players, um, so. Atake Yu is 20 years old. Um, right. Sakai Yuki is... I'm just checking now. Sakai Yuki is 18. Right. So both of them... Now, both of them are, are quite young. Um, but not both of them are looking for their first title. Yep. And... Um, I think I definitely thought that Atake Yu was going to easily win this. Yeah. Um, based on the fact, you know, he is a he is a seven dan and and like he's he's earned that that seven dan rank. I mean, mm. qualifying for a major league is pretty impressive. Yep. Hundred percent. And yeah, as far as I'm aware, well, Yuki Sakai Yuki definitely hasn't qualified for a league. I'm not sure if he's gotten close. No. Um, mm. But. Yeah, Atake Yu, he has. He also he's also competed in the the main tournament for the Tengen. Yep. Um. So he's he's qualified for two main tournaments in a, in majors. Sakai right. Yuki has not. No. So I was basing yeah basing my predictions on that. Yeah. But um, Sakai Yuki actually um. Won two nil. Yeah. Um. Now this this rookie king final was marketed as the plain style versus chaotic style this is the translation by um, the usgo.org website so a uh, plain style is otake yu and chaotic style is uh, Sa- uh sakai yuki so that kind of give you a, a sense of how they play I, i've of course i've seen a couple of otake yu's kifus it, it, it does have does tend to feel a bit more clean a bit more like simple that's the way the styles that he plays it yeah a bit more patient yeah, yeah. Um, but Sakai Yuki, if you look at the Kifu, you definitely do notice that he he maybe prefers a bit of a messy fight, uh, a bit like o- o- Orise, I would say, something like that. Yeah, so um, yeah, very, very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't follow the games too closely, but I do remember the second game. Right. Um, Atake, you had a sort of a small advantage, and right. then um, Sakai Yuki just plays, you know, a, a very um, deep invasive move kind of like a lise doll style move right um just yeah just um trying for chaos and otake you just didn't deal with it very well no. like he he sort of fumbled fumbled his advantage away yeah. um which is i guess exactly what um sakai yuki was going for yeah um just very different styles so um, both are very promising players. I do remember seeing Otake Yu's name pop up, you know, randomly, you know, everywhere. So and now he's made a major league, 
uh, yeah, it will be very, very interesting to see, you know, where... Well, he hasn't just made a major league. Um, so right. I mentioned he's made the key, the Tengen Main Tournament right. and he's made the Honinbo League. Yeah. But he also won the... Um, he also won the Kisei C League. Right, yes, that's right, yes. Okay, not not only that, I think he won the Kisei C League, but he has already played the... Uh, well, the, the the player from the B League that would uh, that would participate in the Challenger tournament, and he actually won that game as well. So Take Yu is uh, will, will now f- uh, challenge the winner of the A League, and if he wins that, he might play the winner of the S League. Who can? Oh, not not the winner of the S League, the the second placer in the S League, and he, if he wins that, he 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 will need to win two games versus the winner of the A League, uh, S League. Sorry. Which is Shibano Toromaru, and then he might become the Kisei challenger. So that's Otake Yu is still in outside his so, chance for uh, challenging for the Kisei. So, so in the Kisei C League, to win the C League, you have to win five straight games. Correct, yeah. So he's won that, and then he's beaten the B League champion. So he's actually won six games in this Kisei tournament, not not include not including the qualifi- yeah. any qualifying games that he would have had to play. Yeah. So six games without a loss in the Kisei yeah. system yeah. this year. So, yeah, so yeah, he's he's in great form, mm. um, but it was is it was not to be. Sakai Yuki um, got the title, so this is Sakai Yuki's first title. And, and yeah, the very curious thing is based mm. on eligibility. Mm. Neither of these players um, are eligible for the Rookie King tournament anymore. Yeah, that's crazy. Sakai Yuki as as a champion, as a mm. as a Rookie King champion, mm. is ineligible. Yeah. To compete in future tournaments, and Otake Yu as a seven dan, yeah, um, is too basically too strong, too yeah. highly rated, yeah, to compete in future, yeah, rookie king tournaments. So yeah, very very curious that uh, these two finalists are now, yeah, both ineligible for the tournament that they played the final in. Yeah, and guys, uh, and let's let's kind of wrap back with a little bit of a trivia back to Sinjin. So, all right. Uh, now you have mentioned that it's no longer possible to win the rookie king if you had won it before, but that wasn't always the rule because uh, Yama Yamashita Kaigo have won this tournament four times, hasn't he, consecutively? Yes, Yamashita. Yes. 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 Now, now, how is that related to Sinjin? So, is because, as far as I can tell, winning a tournament four times consecutively like that that isn't a like title uh, challenger system is was a record before Sinjin So broke it this year by winning the GS Caltex Cup five times in a row, if I'm not wrong. Right. Yes. Yeah. So um yeah, that's another another loop back to Sinjin So for you. But apart from that, that's that's the rookie king wrapped up. Now Gaza Well that's the Japanese rookie king. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, even a little bit earlier than that one, there was a Korean Rookie King. Oh, yes. Tell us about that, Gaza. Yes. So the Korean Rookie King, um, I'm not entirely sure of the criteria for it. Right. But it, it is a little bit, the criteria is a little bit different in the Korean Rookie King because one of the finalists is actually was actually 26 years old. Right. So um, the Korean Rookie King is a 64-player a knockout tournament and you know basically all of the young players are eligible so um the pro one of the the bigger you know the super rookie as some korean fans like to call him han Woo jin mm-hmm. um was possibly the favorite to win this to win this title um there, there was also lee yuen i think he is still el- he he competed in this one I believe, mm-hmm. of course, the IBK Cup champion Jong Yu Jin. Mm-hmm. Um, she competed in this. Um, in the end, Han Woo Jin did make the final, and he was up against Hyo Young Rak, right? Who, yeah. who I believe, um, if I'm just quickly checking, so I believe that um, Hyo Young Rak is 26 years old. But he's actually been so Han Woo Jin, by the way, is um, 
17. Right. Uh, he turned 17 a month ago. Hyo Youngrak is 26. So they're almost, he's almost 10 years older than Han Wu Jin. But Hyo, Hyo Youngrak has been a pro for, for less. Han Wu Jin has been a pro for longer. Right. Han Wu Jin has been a pro for three and a half years. Hyo Youngrak, he's, he's, his one year anniversary was literally, is literally today. So he's, he's been a pro for now one year. Right. Uh, so that's why, that's why a 26 year old is, is participating in the rookie key because he's, he's literally a rookie. <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas Hanru, Hanru Jin, because he's so young, he's eligible for rookie king. Yeah. Um, so, so these two are playing in the final. Now, unlike Japan, where it's best of three, this is just a one game mm. final. Yeah. And in this case, Han Wu Jin won. Mm. So Han Wu Jin is the Rookie King champion. Nice. And Han Wu Jin was a four. So in, in Japan, if you win a restricted tournament, a restricted tournament is one like a youth tournament or a women's tournament or a senior tournament. Mm. If you win one of those, mm. you get promoted one rank. Right, in nice. Korea, so Han Woo Jin, he was a four dan in this tournament. He get he he was promoted to five dan after yep. winning this. Yep. Um, sorry, sorry. Actually, Hyo Young Rack. Sorry, this this today is not his um one year anniversary. I got the dates mixed up. He so he turned pro on on July tenth. Right. So the tenth of the seventh, where today's the seventh of the tenth. Right. So, but. But he, he's been a pro for he's been a pro for for fifteen months, mm. so like he still it still has not been a long time. Yeah, yeah. So um, but yeah, congrats to Han Wu Jin, the super rookie. Super rookie. And he he may be the you know the the next top player after Shin Jin So yeah, um, I I remember people saying that about Moon Min Jun. So you know I don't know. Yeah, so it seems yeah. like Moon Min Jun's time has um. Yeah, Moon Min Jun hasn't quite lived up to expectations um, no, after did. winning after winning the Globus Cup. Yeah, um, it seems like he's sort of stagnated. Yeah, and perhaps perhaps ha- and Han Woo Jin is is also like two years younger than Moon Min Jun. Right. So maybe Han Woo Jin is the next big hope, the next you know sort of teammate for Shin Jin. So I guess yeah. we shall see. We shall see. Um, Gaza, we're gonna do. From talking about rookies, we're gonna talk go talk about veterans now, Gaza. And right. Do you want to tell us about this another person who's accumulated a thousand wins as a pro in Korea? Yes. Every time, every time a pro scores a thousand wins, I think it, it, we're obligated to talk about it because yeah. it's such a it's such a momentous achievement. Yeah. For many of these players. Mm. Um. So this is Choi Kubion. Yep. Um, he's a Korean. He's the 14th Korean to get 1,000 professional wins. Oh wow! Only 14. Yeah. I, and I believe I believe he's the 43rd overall player. Um, I I I'll ha- I I'm, I'll have to check that, but I believe yeah, he's the 43rd. Um, right. And yeah, he's he's quite an old player. Right. Um, as as most players are when they, once they reach a thousand wins. Yeah. Um, but he turned pro. I'm just checking when he turned pro. Oh, I don't even know. He actually. So he turned nine down. Right. Um, in 1999. So 23 years ago. Mm. Um, let me try and find when he turned um, pro. He, so he turned pro in 1975. Right. So he's been a pro for about forty-seven years. Right. Um. And so now he has one thousand wins, and he, as 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 is probably appropriate, he reached it in the senior Baduk league. Nice. Um, he beat he beat Kim Sung Jun. Yeah. Um, who is also a very strong player. I'm not sure. I don't think he has one thousand wins. Mm-hmm. Um. I'll just, I'm just going to quickly check to see how many wins Kim Sung Jun has in his career. Uh, he has 808. Yeah. Oh, wow. So he still has a little bit of a way to go. But yeah. now 
Choi Ki Byung, he he's um he's won two titles. He actually won the very first Maxim Cup. Right. So that that is the Crazy. tournament. That's sort of the tournament for nine dance mm. in Korea. Nine dance um, exclusively mm. play in this tournament. And I said he turned nine down in nineteen ninety nine. The first Maxim Cup tournament was in two thousand, and he won it. Right. Nice. So that's pretty impressive because you know, nine downs back then you've got Seo Bong Su, Cho Hun Hyun, um, Yu Chang Hyuk, Lee Chang Ho, and mm. he beat he beat all of them. Oh wow! Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and he also won he also won the Daeju Cup. So that's like the seniors tournament. Yep. yep. He won that in twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. He actually beat Choi Hee Yeon, uh, a women's player. Yep. Um, to win that one. Hmm. Um, and he also participated. He represented Korea in the Nong Shim Cup in 2001. Yep. Uh, the third Nong Shim Cup. Um, he didn't. He didn't win a game, but Korea did win that um, Nong Shim Cup thanks to Lee Chang Ho. Yeah. Thanks to Lee Chang Ho. Um, yep. Yeah, he also, in the, the precursor to the Nongshim Cup, the SBS Cup, he also competed in one of those. Right. Um, where he did he did win a game in that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he's competed in several uh, international tournaments. So he's he's done the LG Cup, Samsung Cup, mm. the Fujitsu Cup. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's represented Korea many, many tournaments. So, yeah, he's, pro- he's, he's probably a very popular and well-known player. Yeah. In, in the Korean prefer- in Korean pros, and now he becomes the 14th mm. to get 1,000 professional wins. So big congrats to him. Big congrats, yep. Um, and, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, good for him. Uh, the thing is, though, there are, there are actually a couple more Koreans that are on the verge of 1,000 wins, and I right. think that, and I, I, I think, there's going to be at least two that get a thousand wins before the end of the year. Two more Koreans, that is. Right. Um, but we can talk about that when it happens because yes. yeah, I don't, don't want to take this away from Choi Kyubyong. Yeah, he's done quite quite well. A very accomplished player, I must say. He's not very. His name doesn't you know get mentioned much in Chinese media. I don't really know much about him. But okay, moving on, Gaza. Now that we have celebrated another thousand wins, uh, we are going to pay a thousand percent attention to a upcoming tournament, aren't we? And that is the Nongshim Cup, Gaza. Uh, there's there's a couple of news about the Nongshim Cup. Um, very recently, over the last week, firstly, uh, China finally decided to select Fan Tingyu as the wild card. So this is the lineup for the three countries. We might just as right. well, we, we, we might as well just go through the names. Uh, for China, we have Lin Xiao, Gu Zihao, To Jiaxi, Fan Tingyu, and Ke Jie. Uh, of course, Fan Tingyu, as, as we mentioned, is the wild card, the latest addition. And you did mention that this Chinese team perhaps isn't the strongest Chinese contingent you can put together. Yeah, I'm a li- I it it was curious because um, the wild card selection was obviously the last one to be selected and. Mm. Um, there were two. There were basically two very strong um, contenders. Mm. Um, one of them being, of course, um, Fan Ting Yu, who ended up getting selected. Yeah. The other one is Li Jun Hao. Yeah. Um, and he's arguably, he's probably the strongest player in China at the moment. Yeah. And you could argue mm. that he's the strongest um, player in the world. Possibly, possibly. No, not really. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so Li Xuan Hao didn't get selected. Now Fan Tingyu does have a very decorated record in the Nongshim Cup. Uh, yes, I th- and I I feel that that may have been the reason why he was selected. Right, right. Well, not just his form; he is in good form at the moment. But yeah. that his his Nongshim Cup um, experience and and record so far mm. probably um, certainly swayed yeah. um, his selection. Right. Um, he's he's the most accomplished um, Nongshim Cup player for China. Right. In terms of the number of wins, yeah. In terms of number of wins, I believe he has eighteen wins, which is right. only one behind Li Chang um, the legendary Li Chang Ho. The legend, yes, yes. Um, 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 
Yes. And Van Tengut, he did get, get two seven wins in a row, didn't he? Yes, he, yes. Um, on, on two occasions, he's he's had a seven-game win streak, which is a record yep. in the um, in the Nongshim Cup. I believe Dang Yifei has also won seven games in a row. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, for a single tournament, um, yeah. seven seven wins is a record, yes. yes. And he's done it twice. Twice, so yeah, very, very... So I yeah. believe in both of those, I believe on both of those occasions, yeah. so on both of those occasions, obviously, he was he was the first player on in both on both occasions. Right. And so he he didn't he didn't um, he ended up losing up his eighth game both yeah. times. Yeah. But he was the on both occasions he was the only Chinese player to lose a game. Right. I see. Yeah. So China ended up winning both. Oh wow. Um, so that's, oh, that's... Actually, no sorry I, no sorry um, no on one occasion. Yeah, he won seven games. Yeah, no, on both occasions. Yes, on both occasions, he was the only Chinese player to lose. Yeah. And and that was because, you know, both times, mm. the second Chinese player only needed to win one game. Right. And that, and they, and China won the Nongshim Cup. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so yeah, he, he, he set, he set them up. Mm. He set them up for success both times. Yeah. yeah. And can you believe Fan Tingyu is only like 26? Yeah, he's been around a while. Like yeah. I, I'm not surprised because everyone everyone was astounded when he, at how young he was when he won the um in cup the in cup. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he was 16 so, or something. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he was 16. Yeah, he was. Um, and I believe that I believe he was the youngest ever. He wasn't the youngest ever world title um, winner no. champion. Yeah. But he was the. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was the youngest ever nine down. Right, right, right. Because winning winning the in cup, yeah, um, automatically got him promotion to nine dan, and yeah. um, you know, back when Lee Chang Ho set the record for youngest um, world major winner, that 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 um, that promotion to nine dan wasn't around back right, then. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Oh well, unfortunately. Um, now, you may be interested to know that Fan Ting Yu will also play as China's first player. He will face Ichiki Ryo of Japan. And talking about Ichiki Ryo, let's go through Japan's team. We've got Ichiki Ryo, Yu Chengchi, Shibano Toromaru, Xu Chaoyuan, and Yama Yuta. And you would have to say this is probably Japan's strongest possible lineup. Well, this is the exact same lineup they had last year. Yeah. And they came second. And, hey? And they came second. Well, they year. came second. It's It's hard to say just how well they did. I mean, because, mm. so Shibano, I would say, was underwhelming last year. He lost his mm. first. He lost the first game. Yeah. Uh, Su Sha Wan beat Li Wei Ching. Yeah. If you remember, so yeah, not and then he only lost to Park Chun Huan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Su Sha Wan did a fairly good job. Mm. Then Iyama Yuta just absolutely crushed it, winning four games. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like Yu Sing Ji and Ichiriki Ryu, obviously they both lost their only game. But yeah. the problem is they were playing Shinji and So. Yeah. So you can't really say that they underperformed. I mean, they really didn't have much of a chance, really. Yeah. yeah. So you could say only Shibano really underperformed. Yeah. Last year, mm. and I, Shibano this year, I think he's in better form. Yep. Um, Ichiriki Rio is not in better form. I I would have to say. Yeah. No. Yu Zheng Chi is a little bit hard to hard to determine. Yep. Um. Yeah. Not really sure on his form. And Susha Wan and Iyama Yuta, uh, I think I, I would back them any day, you know. Well, yeah. not against anyone, but I'd, yeah. I'd, I'll back them to give strong performances. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so that's, that's and now, given that Japan have put out their strongest possible lineup, you would say that Korea has also arguably put out their strongest possible lineup also. Korea's lineup is Shin Min Jun, Kang Dong Yun, Myun Sang Yeo, Park Jun Hwan, and Shin Jin Zo. Yeah, this is this is an inst- so this is actually Korea's top five. Yeah. In current rankings. Yes. And this is a, this is an insanely strong um, lineup yeah. because all of these now that um, Shin Min Jun has has won the Myungin, yeah. all of these Korean players now currently hold a title. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So. So Shin Min Jun, as we said, he has the uh, 
Myungin. Yep. Um, Kang Dong Yoon is the YK Construction Cup champion. Yep. Park Jun Wan, he currently has the um, uh, Hanguk Kiwon Championship and the Maxim Cup. Yep. And uh, the Samsung Sh- Cup. Oh, and the Samsung Cup, of course. He's yeah. the Samsung Cup champion as well. Yep. Shin Jin, so he has the GS Caltech Cup, the KBS Cup, the Yong Siong, the Korea's Strongest Cup. Um, the Kuksu Mountains International Tournament, the LG Cup, yeah. and he has the Chunlan Cup. Yeah. Um, so he, he's got a few titles. <laughs> yeah. And Byun Sang-gil, he won, he won a tournament um, in January. Mm. I can't remember the name of it. Wait, let me let me see if I can find it. But he, he does he does have a title. Mm. Um, obviously, he doesn't have the Kuksu Mountains cup anymore or oh, the crown the crown Haiti Haiti cup right yeah that's the one he has he beat uh Han Sung Ju mm. um it's it's a I don't think I'm not sure if it's um an uh fully open tournament but he still has a title so yeah. they all have titles yeah um I'm not sure if I'm not sure if there's ever been a Korean <clears throat> team that have featured five title holders mm. yeah but um this one does including three international yeah. titles yeah, um, of course, last year Korea also put out their uh, numbered one to five, but uh, if not for Sin Jin So, they would have you know come last last year. They could have come yeah. last last year. Yeah, they, they they probably, they were very, very close to coming dead last, Yeah, um, which I don't think has ever happened before. No. No. Um, yeah, so yeah, Korea has never come last in the, in the Nongshim Cup. Um, and they very much almost did. It, and it, it was really only because of Shinjin So just deciding to be God. Yeah. Um, Clean that, up. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Korea ended up winning it. Uh, also, perhaps a little bit of fortune with some technical problems against me eating. Oh, yeah. Technical problems. Yes. Um, well, let's not get controversial. I, w- I would say that um, the, the game was even when it, when it, had disruption yeah. but um yeah. yeah in my in my opinion the uh the nongshim cup is well it's the sec it's probably the second biggest team event yeah um after after um the asian games right yeah um, um, yep. and yeah it's yeah and you mentioned so you mentioned earlier that fenting Yu is 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 leading out for china yeah and like it, it should be said that that's almost exclusively where he plays he's he's probably the only um sort of um i guess sort of expert lead out mm. player uh, i'm just i'm just trying to find um how many times he's played first yeah um and, and this could be the sixth time right that he's been the opening player yeah for china. for china and and really there's no one else who's sort of um sort of you know really um who really does that who's yeah. who's known to to be the first player yeah for the team yeah. yeah now i now it's does so, so a draw uh came out today so Ch- china will face japan as we mentioned and fenting you will play ichiriki now i do believe that if i remember correctly this might be in 2014 when ichiriki played for japan in the nongshim cup Ichiki also played first, if I'm not wrong, and Ichiki had achieved three wins in a row uh, back then. Uh, that was yeah, that was in 2015. Right, right. Actually, so Ichiriki was first. So he actually was first three times in a row. Right. In 2014, he was first. Yeah. Um, and he beat Byun Sang Il. Right. But then he lost to. Um, I'm just trying to find it. He lost to Tuol Jakshi. Yeah. Um, in 2015, that's when he won three games, nice. including beating mm-hmm. Fanting Yu. Yep. Um, but then he lost to who did he? Who did he lose he to? Might have lost to Fan Yun Ro. No, he beat Fan Yun Ro. Um, um, I can't remember. Oh, who? Who is this guy? Uh, okay, I don't. I don't know this guy's name. Right. Um. um yeah. But um. Yeah, but um, well, he 
he and then and then the next the next year in yeah. 2016 yeah he um he was opening again and he beat Lee Sedol very nice so he was he was the opening player for Japan three times mm. and in all three cases he mm. won his first match yeah um so in this okay in the second one in the second one he lost to Wu Guangya ah uh, yeah okay yeah uh, he's a bit of a veteran player now. Yeah. Um. I, I should point out in that third in that third time in that third Nongshim Cup where he opened, he beat Lee Sedol. Mm. He was he then happened to be the first of seven of Fenting Yu's victims. Yes. And uh, um. Yeah. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So probably should mention that. But in the three times where Ichiriki has opened, he's won his opening games. So. Yes. So. Um. We'll we'll see. We've got the we'll opening see. specialist against perhaps the the next the next the closest thing to an open uh, an opening specialist after fenting you yeah and uh um now after whoever wins that game will face uh with face off with shin minjun who's coming off a high uh just beating sinjin so so i guess i'm personally f- favoring whoever wins the first game to also beat Shin Min Jun because I think after winning a, a major competition you do tend to uh sh- what, what shall we what, how, how should we describe it you tend to lose a little bit of your form but uh, let's see so well I should point out that Shin Min Jun yeah he has opened for Korea hmm. in the past he opened once right and you know what happened he got seven wins in a row he got six wins in a row oh, six wins yeah very nice. Um, so, and his first victim is Fanting Yu as well. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's 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 pretty insane. All of the all three of these guys have mm. very strong performances um, as opening in the past. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. And by the way, sorry, I mentioned. I mentioned that uh, Dang Yi Fei once got seven wins. It's, it's yeah. actually it was actually Yang Dingjing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my apologies. It was Yang Dingjing that got um seven. That got seven wins along with Fenting Yu twice. Yeah. Before. Um, yeah. Yeah, but but we'll see. Um, when Chin Min Jun got his six wins in a row, he also played in the first game. In this case, he's mm. he career gets a bye, so he won't yeah. play until the second game. Yeah. Um. um but yeah, it, it should be interesting. Uh, you would you would think that you know, Shin Min Jun sort of he beat Shin Jin So, so now the Korean public may think you know he has a responsibility to do well in this Nong Shin Cup. Right. Yeah. But we shall see. We shall see. Uh, now, before we move on to the calendar, Gaza, I do want to preview another competition, which is the second Da Chi Shi Cup. Um, so I guess, and I think in in. Pro Weichi last year may have been reported as the Wen Chu Cup or Big Player uh, Cup, but it's actually one of the uh, major uh, titles to have come out of China. Uh, of course, it's on, it's on the second. And Da Qi Shi, I guess the best translation I can think of is a player of greatness or, you know, or literally big player. So, but anyway, player of greatness is probably a better translation of what it means. But uh, the current title holder is Ding Hao. And basically, uh, the competition will start tomorrow as the recording of this podcast and basically this is the round one uh opponents i might just quickly read out their names and just remember that this knockout the winner of this knockout tournament will challenge ding hao for the title of da chi su right okay so the the opponents for round one is Kerje versus liao yun he yiling tao versus li ching cheng tong mong chen versus yang ding xin yang kai wen versus li wei ching Meng Tailing versus Xu Jiayang, Wang Xinghao versus Tuo Jiaxi, Shi Yue versus Dang Yifei, uh, Jiang Weijie versus Li Xuanhao, Fan Ting Yu versus Tang Weixing, uh, Chen Yao Ye versus Zhang Tao, Huang Yun Song versus Tan Xiao, Zhao Chen Yu versus Tao Xingran, uh, Xie Hao versus Xie Ke, Mi Yu Ting versus Peng Li Yao, Chen Xian versus Tu Xiao Yu, and Lian Xiao versus Gu Zihao. So, you literally all... all of the top players in China are in this. So, this is a major, right? Yeah, this is a major, one of the yeah. major domestic. It's also a title challenger system. Uh, now, the other thing to mention is that because of the COVID situation in China, 
I believe only the top 33, you have to be ranked in the top 33 in the Chinese ranking to even qualify for this tournament. And if you decided not to participate, then you know the next uh, highest ranked player will, will get their chance. So that's why it's it's all on big names okay. only. Um, no no surprises there. All of them. Uh, are, are yeah, that's a bit forward. unfortunate. So if you yeah. if you're just out, you can't even. Yeah. Participate in it. yeah it's no, I imagine just ranking outside of that, I and mean, you you get a lot yeah, less yeah. games than. It's there. it's not it's not great, and it's certainly not a system that they should keep once um yeah. once the COVID restrictions are over. But yeah. I I can understand if yeah if you know with the COVID restrictions and whatever yeah um. So how how many days is this uh, knockout going to be played over? Is and are there going to be breaks? Uh, there are probably going to be breaks. I think over the next week, when we look at the calendar, it's only going to be played over three days. So maybe the first few rounds, and uh, or maybe only the first two rounds, um, and then after that, oh, we shall see. But let's gather. Let's let's look at the calendar. To before see. before we look at the calendar, so yeah. it always seems like I make at least one sort of factual mistake every uh, podcast episode, and I've already spotted the one I've made this uh, episode. Yeah. So I said Choi Kubyong was by my by my understanding the forty third yeah. player yeah. to one thousand wins. He's actually the forty fourth. Right. And so the the forty third was uh, Yamada Kimio, oh, um, yes. which okay. we've. Um, We've mentioned before, and I, I I must have forgotten him when I yeah. when I counted Choi Kubion's right. um, um, yeah, status. Okay. So he's actually the he's actually the forty fourth, but he's still the only the fourteenth Korean. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I think if you search for a thousand, literally on Pro Weichi, you see that uh, Yamada Kimio was actually mentioned was the forty third. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I. No. I was. I was getting confused because I actually. I remember the one before that, Kim Su Jang. Yeah. I listed him as the forty first. Right. And then I remember I got that one wrong, and he was the forty second. And then right. I, I forgot that there was another one after it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No worries. Um. But right. next time, next time I will get it right. Damn it! I will get it right. I will check. <laughs> yeah. Get it right. Um. Okay. So let's move on to the calendar, Gaza. Uh, let's 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 restrict it to the next week or so, uh, or maybe two weeks. Okay, so uh, we are sitting on at Friday, after just after the forty seventh major game, and as you can see in the calendar, the second Da Qi Shi or Player of Greatness will start tomorrow. Uh, I believe uh, eight and ninth would be round one. Uh, the top half and the second and the bottom half will play, and then on the tenth. It will be the second round, I guess, and then the big one starts, Nongshim Cup, uh, going for four days straight, uh, and then uh, with a be- in between the Nongshim Cup uh, begin and end, there is the forty fifth Meijin Game Five, Shibana Toramaru Yamayuta. So we could yeah, see. Yeah, that, that's that's interesting because potentially yeah. so. Potentially two Japanese players. Yeah. Uh, the Nongshim, the first Nongshim Cup is four games, yeah. I believe. Right. So, so potentially two Japanese players may have to play. Right. In the first section of the Nongshim Cup, so that yeah. guarantees that neither Shibano nor Iyama will be in the first two players. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite possible that both of them will be that they'll be the final two players for Japan, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it. Yeah. Might. Might just be. Um, and of course, without you know going, getting too excited. Um, actually, after the Nongshim Cup, I do believe the Hoban Cup is meant to start, but we'll probably cover that in next week's podcast as a preview. And also the second Guo Show, that's the same as Kuksu, but in Chinese. Uh, that's also a big tournament in China. That's also scheduled to start next week. Nice, but, but on a Saturday. So yeah, but like huge games to look forward to next week. Yeah, there's actually so there's actually a Doctor G uh, game tomorrow that I haven't put in the calendar. I'll put that right. in now. Right. Um. So when you see this podcast, that that game will be in the calendar as well. That will be between Kim Kyung Yoon and Oh Yoo Jin. Yep. Nice. Yes. Very nice. Uh. So Gaza, we've covered everything and we looked at the calendar. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? Um. I no. I mean, the Samsung Cup is coming up soon. Oh, um. Yeah. And no yeah. Uh. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be big, but we'll we'll do a um, we'll do a preview of that uh, maybe in two weeks time. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. All right, 
thanks Gaza for another great episode and we shall see you next time let's say goodbye bye bye bye